Hi everyone and welcome to our channel. I'd like to show you how you can create a three-dimensional star. Now we know in Aspire it's rather easy. But for Aspire I'm going to show you three examples of how you can do it. I'll show you some of the good points and some of the things to look out for. But more importantly in this episode I'm going to take a look at how you can create a three-dimensional star in VCarve. So let's start. In the Aspire program, it's easy enough to just simply draw the star vector and create a shape from it. Sounds simple. The downside to it is if you increase the shape height too much, the center becomes deformed. So your final shape height is important to watch for. Let's crank this up much further. And you can see how the center really starts to protrude more than the rest of the star. Now this may be something you're looking for but I'm trying to have a consistent even star from the center point and fade out to the tips. So here's another approach. If I draw my vector of the star and I cut apart and only leave the one side of the point, the vector on the one side of the point, and I draw a straight vertical line from that top of the vector to the center of my workspace. I then create a shape because we're going to be using the two rail sweep. Now in this shape, I need to make sure that my right hand side, my return is straight. So I click on the top node, hold the shift key down, click on the bottom node and hit the X key on my keyboard and it'll align itself with each other. I then select the two longer vectors that I drew and now the shape and create a component based upon the two rail sweep. Making sure that they're set to merge, I then take that new component and flip it around the center, left to right. Here's where it becomes tricky. They sort of overlap, or they don't match up. And sometimes there's a little space between them. So if you zoom in really close, you can actually see the space. We can nudge the components closer to one another. And since they're set to merge, you won't get any uncomfortable spikes. And once you have them close enough to where they look comfortable, I would simply group those two together and then simply use the circular copy option of making five points. So that's item number two. But since they're individual components, each side of the star, and they're dealing with pixels, if you zoom in rather close again, one of the downsides to it is you may wind up with holes. And you could see the little white spots between the components. And if you zoom in on the 3D view, you could see that the top ridge is not as pleasant as it should be. So this may not be the best option of creating a three-dimensional star. For small ones, certainly. 
but for large ones, those issues may be more apparent. So here's a third option. I create my vector of the star. I'm going to cut the star apart, delete what I don't want. I'm going to extend the vector of the point so that it matches up with the center horizontal guideline. I'll cut this V shape into two individual vectors. I'll then create the profile that I'm interested in having. Again, that pointed looking profile. I'll choose the two vectors for the point. We're going to choose again the two rail sweep, making sure they're running in the same direction. I then click on the profile and we have our component set to merge. I take that component and use the circular array again, creating five. And there's our star. Probably the best way to approach this. You get to control the height of the star itself. And that's all well and good. But how would you make this in VCarve? Can you make this in VCarve? Well, here's one way it could be done. There may be others, but this is the approach that I came up with. Again, only in VCarve. I'm going to cut my star apart, and I'm going to continue drawing my vector for my pointed star from the right-hand side of the vector to the center point. I'm going to delete that left vector. I don't need that anymore, but I want to join my new angular piece with a straight line. So this is the one side of the star point. I'm going to flip it around at the center. So now I have a left and a right. I'm going to take both of those and I'm going to use the circular copy and make five copies of this double vectored star point. So now I have 10 individual shapes. I'm going to take one of the items from our clip art library, a flat rectangle, bring it into my session of VCarve. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and position it above the right hand side of the top point. I'm going to adjust it as need be and just slightly move it over. It's great that it's flat, but the side of the star has a bevel to it, an angle to it. So selecting the component properties, I'm going to tilt it from the right to the left. And the tilt is always in the up direction. We can look at it in the 3D view to see the end results. That's okay, but now I would, I'd like to slope it or fade it as it goes away from the center of the star. So back to our component properties, click on the fade, go from the bottom of our 3D model to the top, and we're going to fade it. And you can see it's thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom, but it still has that sloped side to it. Here comes the little tedious part. We're going to make several copies of this. I first want to set the level to merge, and then I choose the circular copy and again make five copies. I'm 
I'm going to need to make four additional levels. Then move one of the components to a corresponding level. So each component is on a separate level. Five components, five levels. So here's where the magic happens. I select the first shape on the right hand side top point. I then choose level one and I want to use the clipping option. I'm going to do the same thing with level two and the second component. I choose my second vector shape, choose the second level and use the clipping option. And I'll do this for each level, choosing the appropriate closed vector and the level and right clicking and turning on the clipping option. Making sure that each level is set to merge because you don't want any addition of pixels if they overlap one another. So now I have my five components that have been clipped. And that's all that you'll see in the 3D view. Our next step is to add a new layer. Again, change it to merge. And we're going to add additional layers for a total of 10. Five points of a star, each point has two components, a left and a right. I could have made all the layers at one time, but I wanted to show you how it breaks down and the logic behind it. Now I'm going to make a copy of our first component, except it's going to be flipped around the center. So this will be the left side of the point. Taking that component and moving it to the sixth layer, Using the circular copy, choosing five as the total number of components, these seem to be going now in the opposite direction. Again, separating each component onto its own level. and repeating the process of clipping. Choosing the level, choosing the closed vector, and applying the clipping option. There's a lot of things that could be done now within the vCarve software that could not have been done previously. With the addition of the clipping tool, it becomes very easy to be very creative. So that's our 10th component. Let's take a look at them. You could see in the 2D view, we still have the full component. 
but in the 3D view, it's only showing us the clipped part. And the 3D view is where the software will generate the G-code so you can cut out the model. And there's our star, a true three-dimensional star made in VCarve. How will it look when you cut it out? Well, let's generate a toolpath. First, what I'd like to do is I'm going to select all the vectors of the star and I'm going to copy them to a new layer. Change the color so I can distinguish between the two. And on that second layer, I'm going to use the snipping tool and delete the inner vectors. So I simply have perimeter boundary vector of the star. I can go up to the edit and make sure I choose the select open vectors to make sure there are none. And once I'm happy with that, turn on the components again and make them visible and go over to the toolpath. The first what I want to do is make sure that the model fits within my material. I have a little bit of extra space of material so I'm going to put that at the top. That will get cut away. For this case, I'm simply going to show you the finished toolpath, and I'm going to use the selected vector option with a small bit. Calculate. And let's preview it. With that same vector selected, I'm going to create a profile toolpath so I can cut out the star. I know my settings are not realistic as I would never cut that deep in one pass with, what, with a very small bit. This is just for an example to show you what it looks like. You choose the appropriate settings for your machine and material. But there we have it, a true 3D star made in VCarve. Let's take this a little further. We can add some words, some text. I also bring in another component, a domed shape. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply the clipping to that new domed component. This is what it would look like. I want to show all of the components so I know what to expect. And now with this new words, generated by the component clipping, I'm going to create a another finished toolpath and another profile toolpath with the same text. I'm going to cut on the outside and cut all the way through. Again, be careful of your settings. I'm going to preview all the toolpaths. And there we have it, a 3D star with curved words using only VCarve. I hope this gives you some idea of how you can expand upon the possibilities with the software. If you think it can't be done, maybe it can't. But, maybe it could. Enjoy the journey of creating. That's where the fun is. 
you'd like to learn more about the software, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell to be reminded of our new videos. And of course, as always, if you need help, send me an email, mm at mazalik.com. I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy. Thank you.